news the uh, video that I did yesterday down through Miami um, the microphone was still either crackling real bad like it was before which I figured that figured out what that was is uh, every time you hit a bump it picks up that shock from the bump in the microphone and registers that as a as sound so and kind of lost out on that so i'm gonna have to figure something else out with the microphone or the other thing it was doing is literally not recording anything so we're uh we just got done getting fuel here in mason georgia we're heading back up obviously you can see there's uh nothing on the head rack so we Decided to uh, cut our losses. Couldn't find anything out of Florida, and we're we're on our way back up to Smyrna right now. I got a real good load. I learned how to shut my door properly. Uh, I got a real good load going into Charlotte. Um, so I will load that up tomorrow and take that home with me. Then I will. Uh, I will be delivering that uh, Monday morning. We'll leave out at about 2.30 in the morning, get down to Charlotte, try to get in there before rush hour hits. And if we can do that, then I will get you guys some videos of Charlotte and delivering. And uh, from there, got another load. Um, I'm just trying to decide how we're gonna work it. Because uh, I got, at this point now, three loads up in uh, Bell Camp, Maryland. Um, so I'm trying to decide. I mean, I, I could deadhead up to Bell Camp. Unless I can get something out of North Carolina heading up that way. Um, run up there. Grab a load out of Bell Camp. So that'll put me... Uh, uh, I think it was 2800 to Charlotte, and that'll be another 2600 uh, coming out of Bell Camp back to Knoxville. And I can run back up to uh, Smyrna, and they have stuff going everywhere between uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Louisiana. Mississippi, Alabama, Texas, Arkansas, Missouri, uh, pretty much uh, Kentucky, everywhere around the state of Tennessee. So uh, we'll find a load going somewhere. Uh, I don't know where yet, getting back into Smyrna, but we will. Uh, I'd like to, that's good paying loads going down to New Orleans, which would be awesome because I can turn around, get down to New Orleans, deliver, and I, I think those are $2,800 or $3,100 loads, get down there, cut right back into Canton, Mississippi, which is I think like four hours away, um, grab a load out of there, go right back into Charlotte, I'll just bring that, I'm mean, right back into North Carolina, I'll bring that home with me, spend the weekend, and start the week after the same way I'm going to start next week so yeah this week we're kind of cutting our losses a little bit got burned running down to Florida took took two decent loads down into Florida one on me one on my other trailer um but normally I don't ever have trouble getting out with something at least okay to good um but th this time, I mean, just, just I, I think because, two, two reasons, because of the hurricane, um, everybody grabbed everything and just hightailed it. 
And secondly, um, I think, uh, well, like my driver said, snowbirds coming out of New York and uh, Ohio, Michigan, the northern states, going down to Florida for the winter, just started. I'm, I'm, I'm talking within the last two to three weeks. Um, snowbirds have been going down to Florida, so that also adds another, I'd say anywhere between 1,000 to 1,500 extra trucks that aren't normally running down there into the market. And, well, it obliterated it. So, we will, uh, we're just cutting our losses, heading back up to uh, Tennessee, and we're gonna start over. But uh, I will, we'll, we'll start fresh next week. We're gonna go get the load on, bring it home, and start next week with, with something new. But uh, up here, I can tell you what, I don't, I don't really know, other than what I've seen on YouTube a little bit, uh, how like Tallahassee and Destin and Panama City, that whole area of Florida uh, fared, but they got hit with a Cat 4, almost Cat 5 hurricane from the last I heard, so don't quote me on that. Um, and up through here was a uh, Cat 2, and they, they, there's some damage up here. Not you don't have houses blown over and stuff like that, but billboards are down all over the place. You've got uh, power lines down. I actually pulled into three separate truck stops on the way up here uh, to where I just got fuel, and they were closed because they had no power, which I wasn't low. I was at a half a tank, but I knew getting up through here, you, you could have an issue with big storms like this of either no power so you don't want to get yourself caught out there with no fuel or because places don't certain places don't have power the ones that do sell out of fuel pretty quick so i just i've been burning it down to about a half tank and then uh, i start looking to get fuel again so been doing that all the way up well for, since the uh, florida line and uh just trying to play it smart I, I bring uh, food with me, so I don't I don't have to worry about uh, restaurants or anything like that being sold out. Um, I, I bring all my own food with me, and usually cook right here in the truck. I got a little cooker, and uh, maybe I'll do a video on on my my setup uh, and, and show you guys because. Look, I mean, I, I literally, I go to the grocery store, spend 30 bucks, and that gets me my water, that gets me my Gatorade, that gets me uh, all the food that I want uh, for the week. So, realistically, that, that's a good way to go instead of falling into the truck stop and spending $20, $25 on a meal because those meals are expensive by the time you get drained and whether you grab a steak and potatoes or a plug sandwich. I mean, after tipping everything, you're maybe the lowest of $15, normally around $20, $25. So it's insane. I mean, and if you got to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner out of truck stops, you're, you'll go broke quick. It doesn't take long to make fifteen hundred dollars a week, but spend five to six hundred dollars in the store. Um, so yeah, my my normal ritual is uh, I, I have my truck here. I am in a Western Star with what I would say the perfect setup for making money when hauling cars. I'm in a Western Star truck. I have a 36 inch sleeper. I don't have a refrigerator in here. And there's no cabinets in this truck. 
Uh, but this truck, see, look at those trees down hanging over the guardrail. I'll tell you what, those are probably in the road yesterday. Um, but I'll tell you what, my truck here is designed, like I said, to make money. Um, I can put just about any load I want on it. And actually, in my opinion, this truck's pretty light. Um, I don't know why, because I've always heard Western Stars are heavy. Um, I specifically look for the Western Star, not because of the weight or anything like that, but I look for the Western Star specifically because uh, the roof's lower than a chopped and than a Peterbilt that's not chopped. So getting trucks and stuff like that above my cab is easier than somebody that that has the taller bunk, uh, the normal size bunk, flat top bunk on a Peterbilt without having it chopped. But uh, and then this truck weighs out. I don't remember exactly, but I think 30, with full tanks of fuel, it's like 33,600 or 34,600. I can put roughly 35,000 or 36,000 pounds on my truck to make weight, uh, which, which I'm happy about. Um, I think I did that math right. Maybe not. Might have been 42,000. I don't know. I, uh, th I think it's about 42,000. 42,000 or 43,000. Because, yeah, yeah, 42,000 or 43,000 pounds. Yeah, I, I confused myself. Either way, it, it's in the 40,000s, low 40,000s. For a Western Star, I mean, I really expect this to be pushing 45,000, 46,000 fully loaded, but it's not. So I'm, I'm real happy about that. Um, but in my truck, I have just a little cheap uh, three drawer, uh, I guess, little like storage thing, shelf thing. Uh, that I sit right behind my shift lever here and my passenger seat and I have just a little $14 cheap little like almost like a crock pot but it's not because you can't set the temperatures or nothing it's either on or off and it, it boils water pretty quick so um, whatever you would call it it kind of has a lid like a pressure cooker but there's nothing in there to hold the pressure back. So, um, that's it. In the morning, I get up, I pour some water in my, uh, I pour some water into the, uh, that, sorry, that RV park got, uh, got whacked pretty good. I don't know if you saw that in the video or not. Um, I pour water into it and put the lid on turn my inverter on and started cooking then I get out and I do my uh, pre-trip and that sort of stuff um, I go into the truck stop brush my teeth get ready for my day grab my cup of coffee then I come back out and uh, the water is usually boiling by then two packets of oatmeal for the morning I, I mix that right in and that's what I eat in the morning and then uh, in the afternoon, I'll usually have I'll usually have a uh, two peanut butter and jelly sandwiches or two ham and cheese sandwiches or something like that, and a handful of chips or so. And then uh, in the evening, what I do is I get those hungry man soups which are good, they're, they're like 500 calories uh, for two servings. I take a lot of those Hungry Man soups, 
I dump it in the pressure and in the little cooker thing, obviously, after I've cleaned it. I dump it in there. Uh, I let that get hot. Um, and then after it gets hot, I turn around and I just take usually like plain mashed potatoes, the, uh, the, those little 89 cents or 99 cent packets you get at Walmart or one of those grocery stores. I rip open one of those. Um, there are two servings. I, I literally use one serving and I just start slowly mixing it in um, until it gets thick. Thick enough to eat with a fork. And then your hungry man, I mean, they got your vegetables, they got whatever the broth is, some potato chunks, meat, and then I eat that for dinner. Um, and for the most part, that that's usually my dinner. There's enough different varieties of the hungry man where you can get the meatloaf, you can get uh, the barbecue pork, you can get uh, sirloin steak, you can get uh, uh, steak tips, chicken. I mean, there, there's a, there's a ton of different varieties, so it keeps it um, keeps it pretty random. But I mean, heck, for what's a hungry man go for a dollar sixty five, dollar sixty nine, something like that at the store? So you have a dollar sixty nine and half a ninety nine cents. So let's say fifty cents into a dinner. Um, so it's not bad. I mean, it's a good way to save money. It's not, it's really, I mean, I, I don't think it's unhealthy for you. The calories are low and I'm not chunking up like I did when I used to eat in the uh, truck stops constantly. So just trying to be a little bit healthier and, and definitely money wise now that, uh, we got three kids at home, uh, really got to count those pennies and make sure you're not overspending places. Um, but I mean, really, I, I'd rather save the money out here on the road and take my wife and kids to Chuck E. Cheese or maybe Olive Garden or some sort of restaurant. Um, Chuck E. Cheese, I really wouldn't call a restaurant. That's like, I guess, cardboard with cheese on it. But my kid, uh, my oldest likes Chuck E. Cheese. The two youngest don't really understand it yet, but they will at some point. Um, I mean, really, that's, that, that's my setup in here. Um, I have a, uh, little, one of the soft side Yeti, uh, coolers. I put ice in that. Um, I can put my water in there. I use my lunch meat and cheese. Uh, this week at home, I forgot the food, so one of those dough moments. I got on the road and went, oh man, I forgot to buy ice. Wait, I didn't need to buy ice. I didn't grab my food. But I went out and I bought chicken breast for like six bucks, seven bucks. Just three chicken breasts. Um, and I bought uh, some country ribs. I threw them on the grill, diced them all up into like one inch squares, actually one inch cubes. Because my thought process was I brought, I bought pasta and rice and a couple different varieties of like the buttery mashed potatoes and garlic mashed potatoes and stuff like that. And I put some seasoning on that meat. My thought process was, oh, it'd be awesome to turn around and make up some rice. Um, again, those 99 cent rice dishes. Make up some of that rice and then mix in a bunch of that chicken, which I, I would say is even healthier for you than uh, than those soup containers. You don't have the sodium and everything in them. And and I was going to do that this week. Take one of the pasta dishes, same thing. Uh, make up, I don't know, some uh, chicken alfredo and put the country uh, country ribs in there. Which when done right. It's like, uh, I, I think if I'm not mistaken, they're like the, they're like the tougher cut of ribeye, but if you grill them up right, there's not a lot of fat in them, so they don't get real greasy. Um, slow cook them for a while, it makes them real soft and, 
and they're really good. I love it. But uh, I was like, oh, you can put that in like the Alfredo or chicken or stuff like that. And I was like, oh, I was going to eat good this week. And then I, then I forgot it at home. So shame on me. Next time. But uh, hey, guys, I appreciate you watching my uh, vlog here and listening to me ramble on about nothing at this point. Um, I apologize. I got some real cool footage um, down there in like Miami and stuff. I might see about trying to do a video getting that in at some point here in the future. But I mean, we'll be back. Uh, might might be a little while. Might be six months to the springtime when the snowbirds are going back north. Um, and dealers have to pay real high rates to compete with snowbird rates. Um, but hey, sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll get some cool videos um, down through those areas again in the future. Um, maybe, uh, maybe we can get down to like Dallas or uh, Kansas stuff like that. I'd love to get out through Arkansas right now during the harvest. I'll get to see the cotton harvest and the corn harvest and all that kind of stuff. I see some trees down right there on the side of the road. Um, I don't know, just, I gotta, we gotta go places where we can make money, but on the same note, you also want to keep yourself entertained while you're out here. So, again, please subscribe to my channel watch the last episode there was a snippet about some uh something that's going to be coming up in the future um our goal here is a thousand subscribers so let's really start pushing we're gaining a couple subscribers every time but uh not nearly enough so please 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 hit the subscribe button hit the like button if you're a subscriber share these videos with somebody that you think would like to see these type of videos. Um, again, ask me anything. Um, especially right now, where there's not a huge community of people watching, it's real easy for me to get back to you, either with answering a question via typing it, or give me a hint or a question you want me to do in a future video. Uh, if it's a big question, I'll be more than happy to try to answer it to the best of my knowledge. I don't know everything, but I have been doing this for 10 years now. So please guys, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Let's build this family of truckers and future truckers up. And uh, guys, I'll see you on the next one. I love you, I appreciate it. Have a good evening.